Hey guys, my name is Josh. Behind me, we have a small scale recycling center. The numbers in the traditional recycling industry were exposing big loopholes in it. Things like only 9% of our plastic that we've ever recycled actually got recycled. And so what we're doing here is we are able to process 100% of all the plastic that comes to us. The future of plastic is going to be decided on three fronts. So recycling is one, and uh, redu reducing our, our plastic would be two. And then uh, the third one is the, just the total adoption of alternatives to plastic. Finding ways to combat plastic on the, these three issues, I think, is, um, is it's going to be the most important things moving forward. This is some beach waste right here. This one, uh, these are ghost nets, right? So once the fishermen are finished using them, a lot of times they'll just like uh, discard them or sometimes they get snagged. But for the marine ecosystem and a lot of the organisms, these are probably the most harmful. Uh, they just sit out there for a long, long time and they just, uh, you know, collect fish inside of them. The good thing is that this plastic is a uh, extremely durable. This is, a, this is the nylon uh, plastic and it can be recycled numerous amounts of time unlike some other pieces of plastic. All of this stuff has uh, been taking place for about maybe three years. Um, one year was spent with the ideas in the brain and then one year was spent actually uh, financing the machines which uh, we have a shredder and an oven and a, a, a sandwich press over there. Um, and then about one year of actually, uh, you know, getting proof of concept with things. What we want to be doing is try to uh, be right there in a revitalization effort of an industry that we desperately need. You know, I know that recycling isn't the answer to, um, the, the, the plastics problem. There has to be a reduction of plastic and there has to be alternative products and things to the plastic that we are using. But recycling is important to handle the, the issue at hand right now. And the issue at hand right now is that uh, it's, it's choking our marine ecosystems. It's being found in our fish. It's being found in our water. So plastic as a whole needs to be reconsidered and the um, things that we have been doing uh, in the past, I believe that uh, we're going to be coming to some very hard realizations in the future. So uh, we want to be helping people um, have these kind of answers and uh, we want to be a part of uh, solutions for these problems that, um, th that are uh, really important. So plastic comes in, it uh, is sorted into uh, seven different categories. So if you look here, we have PET. This is um, the, most, uh, the most abundant source of plastic on our beaches and inside the homes. These are the water bottles. Here, this HDPE, this stuff is extremely durable and uh, very malleable at low temperatures. So you can shape it at, at different low temperatures. This PVC, this is a uh, number three. Uh, we don't really recommend, and a lot of people don't recommend uh, recycling this because first off, um, the process uh, is very harmful, not only to the people working around it, but uh, also to the environment. It releases a lot of fumes when melted, even at low temperatures. What we'd like to do is actually just repurpose these pieces because in, in their form, their original forms, they're actually uh, quite useful and beautiful, right? It's, it's cylindrical in shape and uh, long, so you can, uh, you could just use this existing form and to, you know, create something from it. So we're trying to promote some upcycling methods for PVC pipes. The number four is uh, the uh, counterpart to the HDPE, which is the high density, and this is the LDPE, which is the low density. You see these trays? This is uh, the PP. This is number five when you look at it. Also, your, your straws are coming from uh, PP. Polystyrene, this is the number six. This is foam and also, it, it's interesting, this, this is also a number six as well. So it's the same stuff, but just uh, processed in a different way. We have ideas for, for these to, uh, to put into uh, some surfboard uh, foam so that people can uh, create surfboard 
blanks. After we sort it here, we send it through a shredder right here. And uh, our shredder is small, but uh, it's an industrial machine that does, uh, that does the job. Once it goes through there, it comes out and you have these uh, nice shredded bits. Uh, we'll put it into some of these molds. You can see our molds are in desperate need of some upgrading. We've uh, just been playing around with proof of concept right now. But uh, in this next year, this is uh, priority number one, is to uh, upgrade our molds. And uh, this is a rudimentary compression stand. It's uh, both of, all of this has served its purpose in getting to proof of concept, but um, we're now past those stages. Molds and stuff will go into here. And uh, let's go look at some product stuff. This is a, a 3D printing machine. This is HDPE filament. This is recycled plastic um, filament. So we're able to take the recycled plastic and feed it into a 3D printer and print, uh, you know, prototyping products. This is uh, kind of the showroom right here. This is basically about a year of R&D and uh, getting to proof of concept. So for, uh, you know, the 3D printer, we've printed out like just some, uh, some items right here. This is a bar of gold and uh, some surfing fins right here. So you can have a, yeah, so surf fins. This stuff here, this is uh, our DIY ideas. What we do is we take plastic bags, parchment paper, and a clothing iron and you, uh, you iron these bags flat and you can create a, a durable waterproof fabric from this. As surfers, we're always thinking of ideas to you know, contribute to a surfing community. This is a very uh, durable uh, surfing fin, uh, scratch proof on the inside. And um, yeah, so we just have uh, different ideas for, for the surfing community here. Here are some little bill folds and uh, you can, it's really, these are just prototypes. It's up to the individual themselves to really expand the uh, creative realms of what to do with this kind of fabric. This is raw material for uh, builders, right? Or even some, uh, so we could do some lifestyles pieces with this. These can be uh, uh, floor paneling, wall paneling, um, the, the ideas for uh, this are really endless, right? Plastic doesn't have to be, you know, single serving products. It can actually be thought about a little bit more in depth and then uh, repurposed into a really large lifestyle piece that, you know, could literally last generations. But uh, even something like this, you could uh, put a frame on it, hang it on your wall and it would serve as like a nice piece of artwork. Um, yeah, this is a uh, HDPE coming from uh, bottle caps. These are just fun wave sculptures here. This is a uh, chopstick skateboard. It's unfinished. It needs to be uh, polished and uh, put some grip tape on it. But here we're also, the idea is to be working in a uh, symbiotic fashion. So your waste is actually feeding a product on the other end. So it doesn't matter if that waste is plastic or that waste is uh, an abundant material like uh, chopsticks too. So this has been uh, cast with a, a epoxy resins and um, chopsticks. So it's bamboo and I think it's structurally very strong. Can't wait to test that out. So we have a pillow. Everyone needs to sleep. Everyone likes to be comfortable. So why not provide something that can, that can uh, accommodate that? This is coming from that kind of plastic right there. This is the LDPE, the low density polyethylene. So this is a nice material to work with for the pillows. So this is a, uh, a piece that can be um, maybe a clock or another seat. So you could sit down on it. Uh, there's just so many ideas right now where we don't wanna go down that rabbit hole and uh, develop too much into one area until we actually decide on, you know, specific products to go with. Because literally the, 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 the product ideas 
um, are endless with plastic. You could do so much with it. This right here is a jellyfish. This will be going to uh, a museum. And this is just an artwork. This is all beach waste coming from local beaches here. We want both uh, simple solutions and long-term solutions, more complex. Um, the simple solutions are focusing more on the most immediate things that we find are um, very serious issues. So this idea right here uh, is taking labels from the, the, the sorting process. Now these labels, and it's not just the labels, but also you know taking some bits of the ghost nets and uh, taking some uh, maybe some food bags, right? So sometimes your bags, they have like some food in them that can't be uh, run through the machine. You don't want to contaminate the machine. So what you want to do is uh, we stuff them into these eco bricks and uh, these aren't, this isn't uh, our idea. These are, this is ideas that have been going around the South Pacific for a few years now. What this does is it, it takes very serious problems and makes a simple solution out of it. So these bits of plastic here are the first pieces that become microplastics, right? They break down very easily. They're targeted immediately by uh, marine organisms. So what we want to do is, um, you know, put them into a, a bottle that hopefully they're going to stay here for 500 years instead of just, you know, wreaking havoc into our marine ecosystems for that amount of time. Basically put them together and configure them in different ways. Some people are building houses. Um, maybe that's a good idea if these guys are professional builders. Uh, I would be more concerned about uh, creating non-weight bearing structures with these first. So starting with planter boxes, uh, benches, um, you know, you can do uh, small walls around your yard with, with enough of these eco bricks. And uh, what you do is you, you, you att uh, attach them together and mortar them just like you would with a regular brick. So putting some concrete or some uh, earth and clay around them and you, it would give it a nice finished look that resembles like adobe structures or something. For our home sorting methods, this is also a very sanitary way of uh, handling, you know, your, uh, your uh, contaminated plastic bags and so I know personally at our house we've uh, we've been packing several bricks a week and uh, they fill up real quick and the good thing about that is uh, you know the trash can and the smell in your house and in your kitchen is minimized so this is actually a sanitary issue as well we want to go in and try to help uh, industries close these loops in their existing models so that they can also work in a more symbiotic fashion. The problems that we want to focus on are first a struggling recycling industry. We want to be there to uh, pull up uh, our, our end of it because we need it. It's a necessity. Um, the other thing that we see is a, a major issue is um, the degradation of our marine environment. So that's a huge issue. And even if people don't uh, choose to see that right now, what they should be considering is that uh, we are um, ingesting and consuming microplastics right now. It's in our water, it's, uh, it's in the fish that we eat, it's in our ground, or it's in our groundwater, our bottled water, it's even in our beer, so that kind of sucks. <laughs> These are all very serious issues, so people, um, should be putting these uh, issues at the forefront of their you know, environments and their health and their economic ends. So we want to be promoting all of that. In Taiwan specifically, uh, we don't have reciprocals uh, and sorting areas on our beaches, on any of the beaches. It's all put onto, the, they have a, a beautiful recycling industry here and that's put directly onto the, uh, the, the community members as a whole, but our beaches suffer when people go down there and they just don't have any place to put their trash, so they just leave it there. The number one uh, plastic waste that we find on the beaches are water bottles. So uh, we understand that recycling isn't enough to 
take care of this problem. What we actually need to do is focus on reduction as well. So uh, having water stations that are providing you know, drinkable water for people would help cut down the, that water bottle um, pollution that, we're, that we see so much of. So we would like to start putting some, first off, some beach, uh, beach containers where people can properly sort plastic, um, not just sorting different things where it's recycles all go into one recycle container, but actually rinsing and discarding plastic separate from other recyclables because one recyclable such as paper it will break down plastic actually does need to be rinsed and discarded and if we were doing that from the beginning we wouldn't be facing um, a, a actually a, a global collapse of our recycling industry so china right now they've um they've stopped taking the world's plastic you can't blame them for saying hey we're not your trash men so all of this plastic, it should have been rinsed prior and it, it, uh, it, it never really was. And that fault falls on me and it falls on the people around me and, and, and everybody who is just ignorant to it. That situation right now that we're dealing with, uh, with, with China and um, we're trying to find these, uh, these ways that uh, the recycling industry can continue, you know, because... Uh, um, the stakes are too high right now and an industry as important as the recycling industry uh, should not be struggling the way it is. So uh, we want to be uh, putting some um, accountability, not just on uh, the consumers and the people, but also putting some accountability back onto the corporations, you know, and uh, letting, you know, because everything needs to have a bottom line. Things need to be incentivized in ways that you know it attracts both uh both parties we need to bring the the consumers and the corporations and governments you know all to the table and uh try to figure out what is um what is a good way in moving forward with this something that's an issue that we're following very closely right now and seeing how we can um fill in these gaps the possibilities are there. So recycling industries right now, they're backfilled. So plastic is gonna be stockpiled in these facilities. The answer to this, even in North America right now, is let's burn it. So that right there is pushing us back onto third world standards and we aren't you know, even at the, 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 the peak of the problem yet. And so for, industries to immediately just say like oh let's just burn it all that and that's a, that's a problem and people need to be hey you're not doing that to my plastic you know i want people to be like this plastic is actually valuable to me if people are doing some creative ideas creating you know some kind of like fabric with plastic right if they're able to create some kind of like fabric material and then their creative minds can take over and this plastic is worth way more to you in a raw material than it ever would be to these recyclers who are just going to burn it anyways. Start sourcing plastic, you know, and saving it in a way that you can create a material out of that. Or start up a grassroots organization like this or follow people online who are so inspirational to us like you know precious plastic for example these guys uh you know they've they've open sourced this uh these machines online so that people can actually look up these machines and you know start their own small scale recycling efforts you know, we wanted to take that a step further and do our own thing where we want to be focused more on the sourcings of plastic. And so we just decided to upgrade the machines immediately instead of create them ourselves. But if communities all around the world started seeing plastic not as a problem, but as a profitable industry that they can capitalize on, um, that right there is going to be the, the, the main thing that solves the problem of plastic, you know, people incentivizing that. The worst case scenario is in front of us, it's before us, and 
I don't want to go there right now because there's no need. I still see uh, an entire community and uh, an entire, you know, in the, the, just the people I'm drawing inspiration from, people off of YouTube and people around me locally, you know, the inspiration coming from them and the uh, way that they see uh, the, the, the problem with plastic, these guys are like-minded human beings, like people that we're talking to in the industry. They see the possibilities for plastic, not just the problems that it's creating. So that's what we want to be doing right now is focusing and aligning with like-minded people so that we are able to see the possibilities with a, a, a future that plastic is not this detrimental thing that's wreaking havoc, but actually seeing plastic as this uh, thing that should be incentivized, properly used in a way that these problems are actually being solved for the future of not just our species, but basically the species um, that we are stewards of. Art has this ability to go into so many different facets of society and it's, it's attractive to so many demographics. The appreciation of art isn't limited to an elite group of people and, it, and you know, it can be appreciated on so many levels. Art, I think, can tell a story. It has to be conceptualized. There has to be a story behind the piece and behind the creation of it. And it makes it so much more impactful than just a regular product. But art is something that, you know, it conveys emotions, stories, and histories, and it can go through so many different realms. Plastic is able to tell this story, and art is kind of the medium in which that story is getting presented and how it's presented. And people are able to, you know, experience, uh, you know, not just emotional uh, connections to pieces, but they're also able to experience intellectual concepts as well. So we want to use art as our platform in moving forward and, you know, opening up these uh, dialogues with plastic. But right now we do have, uh, uh, we have uh, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, are, uh, as of the moment, they are slightly um, uh, neglected. <laughs> uh, been spending most, we don't have any, I'm literally a one man show in this workshop and I'm surrounded by a team behind me that are making sure that um, things are, are, are going into the future. But for me, I know what, where I stand and it's, it's here on the ground and I can't sit and do uh, social media stuff, but that stuff will be getting fed. Um, I will be uh, doing my best to, uh, to feed content onto our social media. But for now, you guys can look us up on Facebook, uh, Thai Wonderful Recycle Co. And uh, there's, a, a, uh, um, there's some stuff we're doing coming up in June, July, August, September with... Um, the uh, Jeju Modern Art Museum. Uh, so we've uh, set up this uh, Plastics Coalition. Um, this was spearheaded by uh, not only uh, what we're doing at Thai Wonderful, but the, uh, the main artist behind that was uh, Yang Kura. He uh, came in and did that lamp. Yang Kura has gone around uh, the world and he's pulled together uh, eco artists specifically from Asia. So in June, we're gonna be going to uh, the Jeju Contemporary Art Museum for our first uh, exhibition and conference where we are gonna be um, in communication and presenting some of the pieces that we've shown you guys here. And so understanding that what's taking place now can actually be scaled into uh, much bigger areas that are more impactful, you know, so we want to be drawing in a larger community base and uh, showing people that you know, there's there's viable uh, solutions for these serious problems. Sweet. Uh, any last words or anything like that? Uh, just be good human beings. And uh, yeah, if you see a problem out there, try to fix it. You know, doesn't take doesn't take much. Just putting one one piece of the puzzle together and moving from there. So, you know, this 
I never thought that I would be going into these kind of areas myself personally. Uh, but now that uh, I'm in, ingrained in it and moving forward and I feel this motivation and support coming from the, a global community behind me right now that's actually not just, uh, not just pushing me, but also I feel like there is a propulsion of this going forward. So that's, uh, that's inspiring, that's empowering. Um, those are the kind of uh, attitudes that we need in going forward into the future because uh, there is a lot of doom and gloom, you know, so the only way to, uh, to, to fix that and not feel like a hypocrite because a lot of this came from me having to look at myself in the mirror and looking back at myself and being like, well, you are just as part of the problem as anything. So that right there has kind of, you know, that was the moment where I was like, okay, now what can we do? And moving forward, you know, and not just moving forward, but being pushed forward is, uh, is something that um, I can see uh, it being possible for other people. It's just, yeah, and what's, what, I, what I've been able to do here is, you know, just, you know, d direct results of people helping me and people pushing me forward in ways you know i haven't come up against any serious opposition because we're not protesting things we're not activists you know we're just coming in with uh you know very non-threatening with trying to find problems to uh, these uh or find solutions to these very serious problems that we see you know so hi everyone hope you enjoyed this episode in the alternative dwelling series if you wanted to see more a playlist is popping up right now where you can watch every episode we've ever made uh, don't forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button and check out the links in the description if you want to support this channel and this show and we'll see you next monday for another episode of alternative dwellings